Welcome everyone to the 18th episode of the Rack of Strength and Fitness podcast, the Peyton Manning episode. Today I'd like to talk about something that I believe uh, people don't necessarily know enough about or properly understand. That topic is going to be overtraining. Now, since this channel is obviously dedicated towards strength, fitness, health, wellness, you know, all the above, it's important that we then discuss overtraining so we're able to recognize, you know, the signs, symptoms in our clients, in our athletes, and also in ourselves. While overtraining can happen to anyone, there are a few groups who are going to be more susceptible. Specifically, these groups are people who are training or in training for competition, uh, athletes, and people who have body dysmorphic disorders. Overtraining is defined as excessive frequency, volume, or intensity of training that results in extreme fatigue, illness, or injury. Let's take a look. Overreaching is defined as overtraining in a short period of time. Here, recovery is easier and can be achieved with just a few program days of rest. In fact, it's actually not uncommon for coaches to purposely create programs designed for their athletes to overreach, followed by a tapering off period to allow for proper recovery. It has actually been shown that deliberately programmed periods of overreaching, followed by a recovery period, can actually help to substantially increase strength and power in some athletes. However, it is not difficult for overreaching to become overtraining if it is continued past the acceptable short window and sufficient rest is not given to the athlete. An initial and common sign that you or your athlete have surpassed overreaching and are now being affected by overtraining would be a plateau or decrease in performance. And alternatively, you may hear athletes describe themselves as stale, burnt out, overworked, overstrained, or overfatigued. As a coach or trainer, it's crucial that you pay attention and track your client or athlete's training progress and listen to them as you work with them. While it's normal and perfectly fine to have some training sessions where you're not setting new personal records, if you begin to see a significant drop off in production, you must immediately program rest for the safety of the athlete. When defining overtraining syndrome, it's important not to be too liberal with the diagnosis as some people will use the term to describe fatigue, which is of course a normal part of training. Following the proper continuum will help to identify if overtraining has in fact been reached. It begins with overload stimulus, then acute fatigue progressing to overreaching, and finally we reach overtraining. Overtraining syndrome can last as long as six months and in worst cases can actually ruin an athletic career. This is, however, very rare. Most athletes are able to rebound given proper time to recover. Diving a little deeper, I want to take a look into two different types of overtraining syndrome. The first is sympathetic overtraining syndrome. The sympathetic nervous system controls all the body's involuntary actions to stressful situations. Heart rate, hormones, alertness, we generally know these as our fight or flight responses. It is believed that during overtraining, sympathetic overtraining syndrome will be achieved first, as the body will be in a heightened state too often and too long without proper chance to recover. Parasympathetic overtraining is the second stage of overtraining syndrome. Here, the body's functions at rest will now be altered due to the overstressed state of the body. All overtraining can eventually lead to parasympathetic overtraining syndrome if not dealt with in time. The overtraining state is associated with damage or negative physiological altercations in the neuromuscular system. Therefore, any acute programming mistake or alteration has the potential to cause overtraining if not monitored properly. So yes, if you're someone who programs buys and tries every day in an attempt to grow your guns as big as possible, you run the risk of overtraining the muscles in your arms and causing more damage than growth. Mostly, however, it's associated with too much volume or too much intensity in a program. But more recently, it has been shown that it can also stem from progressing a client or athlete too quickly through a training program. This is a particularly relevant risk in training because we are all victims of progress. We want to see progress in ourselves, we want to see progress in our clients, our athletes, so much so we may convince ourselves that we are ready to move on or move up when we are actually not. 
Most people affected by overtraining are highly motivated and dedicated athletes. It is crucial to monitor these individuals to protect them from themselves when designing and executing a training program. This can be easily done by including deload weeks in their training. A deload week is a programmed week of light intensity and or volume to allow for more recovery for you, your client, or athlete. But I will get more into the specifics of deload weeks later in the video. Other than just monitoring for performance drop-off, prolonged overtraining can have hormonal effects on an athlete. It has been shown that over a period of time, reduced testosterone and IGF-1 levels can be found in overtrained athletes, as well as increased levels of cortisol. Remember, cortisol is a hormone produced by the body and released during times of stress. While it helps with gluconeogenesis, or breakdown of sugars for energy, it also impedes immune function if it remains in your system for too long. Another way to help identify overtraining in athletes or clients would be from their psychological profile. Mood disturbances are not uncommon in overtrained athletes. Look for decreased vigor, motivation, or confidence, heightened levels of tension, depression, anger, confusion, or anxiety. Overtraining may also impede an individual's ability to concentrate. If you are responsible for an athlete's or client's training, how should you program to make sure that they do not become overtrained? First, you need to take a look at frequency of training. If your client's only coming in once or twice a week, chances are they are not at risk for overtraining. But that also does not mean they should be maxing out every time they come to work with you. If they are training with you five to seven days a week, or they are supplementing your training by training on their own up to five to seven days a week, now overtraining needs to be considered. I personally like to include deload weeks into my clients and my own training. If you're unfamiliar with a deload week, they are program weeks of light, volume, and intensity that act as a kind of working rest week. You still have your client come in to train, but instead of following their normal strength training protocol, cut the weights to about 50-60% to 60 of their one rep max, depending on the individual. This allows them to still come in and perform the exercises, but also gives their body the necessary rest it needs to recover. Some coaches prefer to just give their clients or athletes a week off, while others program undulating weeks of intensity. In these programs, Athletes or clients will have weeks of intense training, followed by more moderate or light weeks. That's all for me, everyone. I hope you were able to learn something that you'll be able to apply in your future training. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel for more training content in the future. Happy training, everyone, and remember, grab the bull by the tusks.